This is the 3D Maker Pro Eagle Max LiDAR 3D scanner. It shoots freaking lasers all around it and is designed to scan really big things like buildings, rooms, infrastructure, bridges, all while on the go. So it's a built-in battery, built-in screen, and you can even put this on a drone. The LiDAR has a scanning range of around 70 meters or 140 meters in diameter and the accuracy is about 2 centimeters at 10 meters, more on that later. But that means that you can quickly get comprehensive and detailed scans of really large environments for quick references. This handheld approach is actually really impressive. With up to 4 cameras for tracking on the Max version, you can move up to 20 kilometers an hour doing scanning. You can also connect a GPS antenna to track your scans even better and also reference to existing datasets. There is also a RTK version of this scanner that enables even better tracking for really sophisticated projects. It's important to know that you can never upgrade the camera to an RTK. You have to buy it like that from the beginning. Before we dig deeper, I need to tell you that 3D Maker Pro sent me this to create a review, but as the current status of software and firmware is a bit dodgy, this video will not be a full review. It's kind of a status of summer 2025. In this video, we'll do some projects just to scratch the surface and see what data this can produce. And then we'll follow up with more videos about cool 3D scanning projects. The scanner comes in this handy hard case, so you can put it down. It has protection from the LiDAR sensor. You have a handle and you have some cable, power cables, of course, to charge it. It does not come with a, a GPS antenna or RTK module unless you actually configure that when buying it. I bought my GPS antenna from a third party shop and it was quite cheap, like 90 bucks, and it works great. So this scanner is the non-RTK Eagle Max. That means that it has four cameras to be able to do the tracking and also better imagery for colorizing or making Gaussian splatting. So with that said, let me show you how easy it is to start scanning. Press on and wait for it to boot. Then you come to your scanning overview. First, click on settings and scan settings. I usually go with the medium accuracy and high point density. Then you adjust the brightness. You can choose indoor, outdoor and manually set it. There is also auto exposure in the next firmware. Save that and go to scan. Connect the GPS if you have a GPS antenna connected or RTK. And we want to use continuous when we have a handheld mode. And then change the name to something fitting like this. When you're ready to go, the scanner will calibrate its own systems, including the GPS if you have that connected. Then you can continue and it will start capturing data. You have three different modes here to show the data. I'm just scanning on my table in the office so the data doesn't look good. You can see all the shadows from the studio lights. But this is a really cool overview. It gives you some insights on what you're scanning and how it works. I usually go with this top-down mode, but there are different modes as well, like this perspective mode. It kind of makes more sense when you're actually moving and scanning. I'll try to show that later. But in here you can see if I turn the scanner a little bit, it will capture more data on a different set. You see the screen is updating and more on the other one. After stopping a scan, you can review the data once more before you export into a software. So let's check out how that looks. This is me capturing the data for the project you will see. We're basically just walking around the house. I have a GoPro attached to the scanner so you can see what's happening. I thought I was going to be able to capture the preview screen, but it really doesn't look very good. You can also see how I aim it a little bit to the right and then a little bit to the left. I do this every now and then to try and get more data. It's also a good idea to move the scanner up and down to avoid scanning shadows. This is an existing product, so see I have some data management already. We'll go through all settings in a future video, but basically the first thing you do is to filter the data. You can choose between cloud filtering and cloud thinning. If you have the RTK or the GPS connected, you can also process that data. Next would be to colorize the scan, which is to take the RGB data from the cameras and apply it to the point cloud. You can also do Gaussian splatting, which takes a lot of computing power. I've tried it and this is just a really low quality sample because that's all my GPU can really handle. And Gaussian splatting is usually a way to present 3D data much easier and effective in like games and the web applications. But please don't really rate my quality here on the Gaussian splatting. This is a really early on feature in the software and it's not really super supported in my old GPU yet. You can see we have three different categories here. So the first one is the first basic data. And if we display here, this is the raw data of the scene. This is a lot of points and a lot of data, much more than you've seen before. 
you can really dig into here and see all kinds of details. It's kind of hard to actually show. You can also see how far the scanner is actually tracking. It gets all my neighbor's houses. This is the path that I've been walking around. It's kind of cool to see where you've been and how the scan route was. Then we can see the filter result. Twitch is a little bit better, but it's more it's difficult for you to see any difference here. It's just better data filtered. And then we can load up the color data. And this is a little bit, little bit less points, but they are colorized. So this is what I export and used in my other animation. And then you can also do like processing of boundaries. You only apply what you really want to have. So for example, my house. But yeah, you can really see there's a lot of cool details. I've been using this to calculate the angles here to see what kind of robotic lawnmower that I need. Because <laughs> I have a little bit of a hill and stairs here on my yard. I think it's really cool to see all these details. It gets even bushes, some of my tires, the tripod legs. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Even the frames for the trampoline is there. And I'm pretty sure the scanner even took some of the interior of the house through the windows. That's really cool. Just check it out. We can see some shadows from the inside walls. But the software has its limits, so what I usually do is select one of the data sets that I want to have and then it just export it and you can export in typical point cloud formats. And just for fun, I try to render this point cloud in Blender as well. It looks pretty cool, but this is just the first attempt. I mean, you can do a lot of cool things in here. I also want to point out that this scan's color capturing was not the best processed. And this is a bonus scan of the studio slash garage. I think it looks really cool. And this is without any color data, just a basic shader with some animated lights. And just to show kind of the scale that you can scan, I'm now scanning my street, which is around 250 meters long or such. I think it's really cool to see all these data and like how you can use it to calculate angles, show inclination and stuff like that. I'm really excited about this LiDAR 3D scanner. I know 3D Maker Pro are working really hard to get all the features they promised supported in the software. But already this is a really useful scanner for the right user. This is not a cheap scanner by any means, but the ease of use, flexibility, mobility and scanning speed and scanning data makes it a really competitive product. Speaking of the scanning accuracy, I can't verify that it's 2 centimeters at 10 meters. For me, it looks way, way, way better than that, especially if looking at my building parallelity, I see the distance between planks, joists, for example, on the balcony. It looks way more accurate than that values that they specify. The problem is I don't have a way to verify the accuracy of this machine. If I'm scanning 10, 20, 30, 40 meters, I don't have another tool to measure that distance equally accurate. I don't have access to any more accurate data sets. I could 3D scan a car with my other scanners that are more accurate, but I can't compare a car scan to this scan. It's, it's not the same. There might be cases where the accuracy, of course, isn't enough. For example, if you're scanning a machine hull that's on a construction, you have metal beams in the roof and you want to align them by like a millimeter, I don't think this is the scanner you want to rely on. You want to have other metrology solutions for that. But I think there's a ton of exciting things where you can use this scanner. And I would love to hear from you where you think you can use a 360 laser scanner like this one. But I'm going to scan a lot more cool stuff and work with the data and try to learn as much as possible and share with you guys. If you are curious, I would recommend you check out the Facebook group where there are really talented developers and users that do really cool stuff with this 3D scanner. To learn more about the specifications and the current price, because 3D Maker Pro often have deals on this 3D scanner, you can check out the affiliate link down below. Affiliate links also help me to buy a better computer so I can process the data, because if you want to do Gaussian splatting, you need a good GPU. I don't have it. And what do you want me to scan next? Comment down below and make sure you subscribe and like. See you guys in the next video. Bye.